about to tell you five stories about the creator of Fortnite. If you didn't know, Donald Mustard is my brother, and he's also the chief creative officer of Epic Games. I've told a bunch of stories in the past about Donald, and today I'm gonna tell you five more. So buckle in, let's go. Okay, while I tell these stories, I'm gonna play through this really cool death run by Ritual. Looks like we gotta get a ticket to get on the ghost train. Dude, this map looks so good. This is kind of crazy, guys. I don't know if I can play through this while I tell stories. Okay, so first story is kind of funny. It has to do with me and my brothers, both of them. I have Donald and Jeremy are my brothers. Both of them actually work at Epic, if you didn't know. Donald's just a lot more uh, publicly visible than Jeremy is. So we were very young and once again, bored. Gosh, when we're bored, just crazy things happen. But in this case, we were just so bored one, uh, like, I don't know when it was. I feel like it was probably in the summer or something. And we asked my mom if we could dig a hole in the ground in our backyard. Just a hole is all we wanted to like dig. I think in our minds, we were probably thinking, let's dig like an underground base underneath our house, which would definitely never work in Houston because the ground is so wet there. You just would totally, whoa, wait, 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 what's going on? Oh my gosh, what's going on? Okay, I just died. <laughs> but the ground is so wet in Houston. There's like no chance of you ever being able to build anything underground. There's no basements, nothing like that. But we wanted to dig a hole anyways, just because uh, why not? Digging holes is fun. So we go in the backyard, back behind my garage, and we dig this really deep hole, probably about, I don't know, close to five feet deep. Like it was over, I wasn't quite over my head at the time. I was pretty young, but it was deep for me. Like my whole body was in this hole. So we're pretty tired by this point because I mean, we've been digging this hole for a while. It's not easy to dig holes. Oh my gosh, what is this level? Oh my goodness. Anyways, we dug this hole. Then we're like, well, what do we do with this hole? There's just a hole sitting in our backyard. Why not cover it with leaves and twigs and stuff and then lead unsuspecting kids from my neighborhood over the hole and see if they'll fall in like you would see in like a cartoon. Yeah, that's a smart thing to do. Whoa, 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 what's going on here? I think there's traps behind me. What was that? Oh, they're up above. Yeah, so this seemed like a really fun thing uh, to do. Now, as I think about it as a parent, I would be ticked off if some kids in the neighborhood were doing this. But uh, we didn't ask our parents for permission to lead kids into this hole. We grabbed a bunch of like twigs and leaves and stuff. We covered the hole up and then it was my job to go find my friends and lead them into this hole. What a good friend I was. So I went out and started asking my friends if they wanted to play and I said, hey, let's go into our backyard and I'll be like, hey, look, I found a really cool uh, lizard or something in my backyard and I went and got my friends and led them into the backyard running around the corner and of course my brothers were back there watching because they wanted to see what happened and we ran around the corner. I jump over the pit and then, oh my gosh, wait, what just happened? I just fell into a pit. <laughs> Oh, uh, that was uh, ironic. Oh my gosh, look at this. There's like literally the floor is like busting out underneath me. This is a little bit of karma for me leading my friends into a pit. But we run around the corner and my friend doesn't quite fall in, but his leg falls in. He's like, <laughs> like we could have totally broken this kid's leg. Luckily, nothing happened to him, but it didn't quite work the way we wanted. So we were like, let's go lead another kid into the hole. And this time my friend is in on it. He's like, that's hilarious. Cause why wouldn't a kid think that isn't hilarious? But then we go and find one of our other friends and lead him into the hole and it totally works he like falls in man we're so lucky no one got hurt oh my gosh what's happening Ugh, i'm falling into pits anyways this was pretty much all donald's idea to lead kids into the pit but it was pretty fun guys this is the kind of stuff we did as kids growing up just you know being kids and being really dumb at the same time but as a kid you know donald did a lot of really funny things like like for example one of the things he did that i remember ah! I thought he died! Anyways, I just remember when he didn't want to go to school this one time, he played off this whole like acting sick like thing and for my mom. And the like the whole key to his being sick and playing off that he was sick was manufacturing some vomit that he could show my mom that he threw up in the sink and he shouldn't go to school. But I remember him making this vomit. I don't remember everything that was in it, but I remember there was two base! Ah, come on, you can do it! Oh, oh man! Oh wait, oh wait, 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 wait. I needed the speed for Adam. After that jump, whoops. Anyways, I remember this fake vomit had toothpaste in it and it had, oh, I'm trying to remember everything that was in it. Uh, I mean, it, it looked really legit. I mean, this is the future creative director of Epic Games making fake vomit. You know this is gonna look good. It looked good and it convinced my mom. My mom is no dummy. Like, uh, she produced some really smart kids. Why? Because she is super smart. But this fooled her even. I mean, it smelled terrible. It looked terrible. I'm sorry if you're getting queasy at me like telling the story, but it totally convinced my mom and dang it, I fell off at the last second and he got to skip school. 
Now, I saw this whole thing and he swore me to secrecy, man. I took a lot of trust for his, you know, his little brother that was seven years younger than him to not tell my mom that it was a trick. But I didn't tell my mom. I didn't rat him out. I've always got my brother's back, guys. I always have. But it totally worked for him and he got out of school, guys. Now, I'm not saying go out and do this, guys. Don't skip school. This is mostly just a story about my brother and the things we got up to when we were kids. And, you know, it shaped who we were as adults. And along with that, you know, as a kid, I just remember seeing everywhere, all over my house, there were drawings just everywhere. If there was an empty piece of paper somewhere, like I remember my mom had all of her, like the emergency phone numbers up above our telephone, because back then we had a telephone, not cell phones. We had like a corded telephone on the wall. And anyway, she had like a piece of paper up above it with all of the emergency telephone numbers on it. It was covered in drawings of little Batmans and little battles and robots and aliens. Every empty piece of paper all over the house was covered in drawings. So Donald was just constantly trying to draw and improve his... Wait, wait, what's going on here? Anyways, Donald was just trying to always constantly improve his art and his craft, and that paid off dividends in the end. I mean, now that look what he does. He's not necessarily drawing for his living, right? He's, uh, he's creating, though. Although one of his main dreams as a kid was making comics. And look, the Batman Fortnite crossover comics have totally happened. That is like a dream come true for him. I just don't think that dream would have ever happened if he hadn't like practiced his drawings. I've even asked his wife, like he still does that. There's still drawings all over their house and he's still, oh my gosh guys, this is like some crazy trap tunnel here. I gotta be careful here. So he still practices drawings though, like even today, he still does it all the time. And I love that about my brother. He's just always like creating, always thinking and becoming like a better artist, a better person, a better creator, which moves me now to him as an adult. And this is a story a little bit, you know, it just teaches you a little bit more about Donald and his mindset. I don't know how long ago, maybe a decade or two. Whoa, 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 what's going on here? Donald was a heavy movie critic. Like he would watch movies and just be like, oh, that was so lame. Ah! Like if you wanted an opinion about a movie, like to get the real, like true artist, like opinion about what how a movie was, Donald was your guy to go to. And he would just pick apart movies. And then I started to notice one day that when Donald would talk about movies, he was just so positive about everything. He'd always just be like, it was so fun. It was so cool. Like he would just say that he loved it. And he was just very positive about the movies. He was watching things that before he wasn't very positive about. I don't even remember what movies he was saying it was really good when I was like, Donald, this wasn't a great movie. So anyways, I asked him about this and he said, you know, I just found myself not liking movies. He was so critical of them that he just didn't like them anymore. And for him, he just loves movies and he hated that he didn't like movies anymore. So he told himself that he was no longer going to be critical of movies, but try and find what was good in the movies, as opposed to trying to like, look for like what was wrong with the movies, right? I think so often in, what the heck? Ah, oh my gosh, my guys did, there's, whoa, what just happened? There's little Peely. <laughs> oh man, I loved that. Anyway, and he was enjoying movies way more than he was previously, because he was just being positive and that there's just always something good to say about a piece of work out there. Every map, every movie, every song has something good about it and we can pick that out as opposed to being critical of it. When he told me that, I just loved that and it helps shape me as a person. Instead of being critical of stuff now, I'm mostly positive about stuff. That doesn't mean I don't have my moments where I just look at something and I'm gonna say, that was just awful. But generally speaking, I'm a pretty positive person and I feel like a lot of that is because of um, the examples of my life. My parents, my brothers, they're all super positive and because of that, I am super positive. And I'm grateful for that example that he gave me, showing me how to be critical of things by looking at what's good and not at what's bad. So I encourage you guys to do the same and look at what's good ah! Ah! <laughs> and not what's bad. Oh, okay, we got past that. Last story and I don't really know if there's any point to this one. I just think it's a little bit funny. But uh, as kids growing up, we didn't go out to eat very much. We weren't the wealthiest family. I wouldn't say we were poor by any means, but we didn't have a ton of money. So we like never went out to eat. Whoa, whoa, we got trick tiles here. So we like never went out to eat. We never went out to restaurants. We always just had good old mom's home cooking. That was the household we grew up in. But as we got older, you know, things started to change a little bit and we started to eat out more. This was mostly after Donald had left the house or my other brother as well and my sister. It says, uh, I mean, there were seven kids in my family. And so, it, you know, taking 
taking seven kids out to eat costs a lot. So we just didn't do it that much. But as people started to leave in my dad's career, you know, he was making more money in his career. We just started to eat out more, right? And when we would get together with the kids that had already left the house, when we like went to visit them, we'd go out to eat. And to my parents, kind of like the place to go was Olive Garden, right? That was, everyone loves Italian. Anyways, then one day we all met at the Olive Garden to eat together. We were waiting out in the lobby. And I remember just looking at Donald. He seemed just a little bit perturbed. And finally, he just kind of, I wouldn't say erupted, but he just blurted out, why do we always eat at Olive Garden? He's like, this place is terrible. <laughs> And my dad was just like, I don't know. It just seemed like everyone liked it. No one's ever complained about it before. I'm surprised that you haven't said anything earlier. And my brother's just like, <laughs> wait, what's going on here? I just thought it was funny. My dad was like, we just came here because you guys liked it. We don't even really like this place. If you want to hear more of these stories, make sure you like the video. I love this Seth run, guys. This one was really well done. Well done, Ritual. We just finished. Oh my gosh. That was so cool.